Today we're going to start our discussion about reaction rates, um, which is essentially kinetics um, in chemistry. So we're going to talk about what kinetics mean and what things have to happen um, in order for a reaction to occur. And so what actually is the rate of reaction? So the rate of reaction tells us um, how quickly the reaction happens, but we measure it based on um, the amount of t reactant used up in a particular amount of time. So we can calculate the rate of reaction using the change of concentration of reactant or product divided by the change in time. So let's take a look at an example using um, pizza. So if we start off with um, a whole pizza at zero minutes, let's say it has eight slices, excuse my drawing. Okay, so we have a pizza that has eight slices at time equals zero. Okay, if we wait um, eight minutes and we come back, we can find that the pizza is now half gone. So if we call this t equals eight, sorry, then that is um, how much pizza has disappeared in a particular amount of time. Okay, and then if we come back um, four minutes later, so this will be after 12 minutes. What we find is that we are now, so now we only have two slices of pizza left, okay? And so, um, and then if we come back again at 16 minutes, what we have is no pizza left, okay? So using this example, we can calculate the rate of pizza disappearance, okay? So if we go from t equals 0 to t equals 8, our change in time is going to be 8 minutes, and our change in pizza is going to be 4 slices. So 4 slices have been consumed from time 0 to time 8. So if we do 4 divided by 8, that's our rate of um, a half a slice per each minute. Okay, And then we could also do this from 8 to 12. So that's a change in time of 4 minutes, so that's what would go on the bottom. And we've actually lost 2 slices. So 2 divided by 4, again, half a slice per minute. And you can see that that rate should be constant throughout, just independent of how much time has passed or how many slices are eaten, um, the ratio between the two should remain constant. Okay, so... The basis of this section is collision theory. And so what is collision theory? Collision theory um, indicates that a reaction will only take place when the molecules collide with the proper orientation and sufficient energy. Okay, so that's a lot of words, but we're going to go into detail about what that means. Um, so for our purposes in this chapter, energy is pretty much heat energy. So as temperature goes up, our energy is going to go up. And this should be familiar to you because when we did kinetic molecular theory, an increase in temperature meant an increase in kinetic energy. Okay, so um, if we don't have enough energy, a reaction isn't going to occur. So for example, baking cookies is a chemical reaction. It doesn't matter how long you let that cookie dough sit on your counter, they're never gonna get baked if you don't stick them in the oven and raise the temperature and give the molecules enough um, energy to react. So in order for a reaction to occur, three things have to happen, and this is the basis of collision theory. The first is really simple. A collision has to happen. So the molecules have to come into contact if we're going to have a reaction occur. They can't react if they're not in the same space and if they're not touching each other. The second thing that has to happen is that they have to be in the correct orientation. Um, so sometimes they can bump into each other, but if it's not in the right um, orientation, the bonds can't break and reform in a different way. And then the third thing, which I already alluded to, is that they have to have enough energy um, for the bonds in the reactants to break um, so that the reaction can occur. So the first is um, the collision has to take place, okay? So here we have a reaction with N2 and O2, um, and they have to come together in order to react, all right? Um, if when they come together, they don't have enough energy, so that energy is represented by this burst here, so you can see there's a really big burst here and a really small one here. So if they don't have enough energy, they're just going to bounce back and you're still going to be left with N2 and O2 at the end and no reaction will occur. Okay, you can see here that in order for these two things to react, the two um, nitrogens have to be lined up with the two oxygens so that you can change the bonding to be this direction. Okay, so if they were to collide in this orientation, 
that's not going to result in a reaction because this um, nitrogen and this oxygen aren't touching each other and so they can't react. Okay, so what are the factors that affect the rate of the reaction? So I mentioned temperature already and that's because temperature is related to um, kinetic energy. So the faster the molecules are going when they collide, the more energy there's going to be to break those bonds. Okay. Um, and then concentration is also a factor. So the reason this is a factor is because the more molecules you have in a given space, the higher their concentration would be and the more likely they are to collide. So if I have um, two of you walking around my classroom blindfolded, you might eventually run into each other. But if I had 20 of you walking around my classroom blindfolded, you're pretty likely to run into each other because there's so many of you and so many um, other people that you could run into. So depending on what kind of um, substance we have, that concentration can be expressed differently. So molarity, which we just covered, is how we would talk about the concentration in a liquid, right? That's going to be the number of moles per liter. In a gas, we could talk about the number of moles in a given volume, um, but usually we refer to pressure as our concentration. So the higher the pressure is, the more molecules there are in a given space, okay? Okay. And then um, surface area applies to solids. So a solid doesn't have a concentration because it always takes up the same amount of volume because the density is the same. But if we make more of the surface of the solid available to interact with either molecules in a solution or in a gas that are going to react with it, then it will react faster. So what this means is if you grind up your solid, it will react faster than if you just put it in as a solid block because there's a lot more um, of the surface exposed to be able to um, collide with other molecules. So the activation energy is the minimum amount of energy that's required to break the bonds between the atoms in the reactants. Okay, so we've already talked a little bit about endothermic and exothermic reactions. So um, what is shown here, the reactants have less energy than the products, okay? But we don't just need enough energy to get from here to here. We also need enough energy to get up here, okay? So... If you remember, breaking bonds requires energy, and you'll get some of that energy back when you reform bonds, but you have to get up high enough to break the bonds, um, and then you'll get some of that energy back when you reform the bonds in the products. So the energy, activation energy on this graph is represented by this distance here between the um, energy of the reactants and the energy of what we call the transition state. So that is the least stable um, state along the reaction pathway.